Good evening. So it's March 1st. Right at the top of the hour or close to it. 4.55 p.m. EST. So I have this listing of things I wanted to talk about here. There's a bullet item list of four. So the first three are kind of short. Number four is kind of complicated we'll get to that when we get to it right so first item on the list I want to address dress a uh, nasty drive-by YouTube comments um, I tend to kind of talk about this uh, seem like once or twice a year I see them as soon as they're posted and I immediately delete them and then ban the user it's as simple as that uh, there is usually no waiting, there is no, no downtime or no like period of percolation or you know 20 minutes after you make the comment and then there's a notification from the system saying that someone left a post. No. I, pretty much almost instantaneous. Just a couple of seconds, someone makes a post. A couple of seconds later, I see a notification that someone made a post. So, uh, it's not like I am looking for these and spending days on end searching for the elusive nasty comments and spending an inordinate in in an inordinate amount of time trying to uh, uh, delete it and, and, and ban the person. No. Within 30 seconds, it's a 30 second process for me, within 30 seconds, um, it's done. So it doesn't bother me, and I usually never see that person again because they're banned. Uh, some some videos tend to kind of uh, attract nastiness. I don't know why. Um, just certain ones. Um, and what I do is, uh, instead of waiting for the nasty comments to come for those particular videos, I just lock it down. Uh, I allow comments, but they have to be approved by me first, so they they don't even show up. So uh, that that's the way it is. It's it's my channel. It's my uh, bit of space on the internet. It's it's that's what I do. So I mean, there's so many of us out there. Instead of you wasting your time leaving a drive-by nasty comment. Just don't waste your time. Just go somewhere else. Um, this is not the place. You know, you might be used to other people kind of accepting that. I don't accept it. I just pretend it never happened. Uh, and the first part of that process is you delete them. And then you ban the person so, so that it never happens again. So number two. Uh, several of you guys have been leaving comments that are not really constructive about the duration of the videos uh, I left a 20 minute video on a on the Rock Island uh, Armory uh, Rock Ultra I think that was the video uh, someone didn't like a 20 minute video I'm like really I mean you take five minutes from that it's 15 minutes that's pretty much the average video that you see on YouTube uh, so it's kinda odd but oh well you know like I said this is my little piece of the internet um, it's not that I don't like criticism I don't like just blanket like criticism you know because it's it's not I don't get anything from that so if you want to leave some criticism you leave constructive criticism so If I say, you know, let, let, let's say, if you say that you don't like 30-minute videos, you tell me why. Because you don't have time to watch 30-minute videos? Or is that what you're used to? Uh, that's valuable. That's valuable to me because I can take that and kind of say, hmm, well, let's see if anyone else, uh, you know, I, I, I can actually look in the, in the YouTube uh I guess 
in the back end or, or you know the console area where you can kind of see traffic and you can see how a particular video is doing and I can I can I can use that but just saying you don't like 30 minute videos or you know as this guy said 20 minute video you no know, I'm out you know don't announce just leave doesn't bug me and, you know I'm, I'm a low volume uh, uh, YouTube channel so I don't, I don't get many hits as it is so I'm not really losing anything uh, uh, I rarely post and when I do I have a lot to say so uh, I posted twice in the last couple of weeks so I'm on a little tear but prior to that it had been close to a year since I had made you know since I had posted a video so I also like to elaborate I don't like commenting on something I, I, you know, and not giving a bit of detail about, you know. Um, if you don't like the, the duration of the video, skip them, uh, you know, and also maybe refrain from posting your thoughts on it because it's it's not going to go anywhere, you know. I'm just going to take those and just delete them, just like I did with that guy's. It doesn't help me any. Um, you know, there are also absolutely tons. That, there's an absolute ton of videos of gun owners. On YouTube reviewing guns and they all do the same thing they all review the same gun usually when a new gun comes out everyone will friend a day or two of each other post gun videos that they either got it or that they've been reviewing it and it's just weird because a lot of times these guys they'll post a video and it's a full-on video like a 15 20 minute video of the gun and the gun was just released that particular day but it's probably because they're under uh, NDA to not say anything until a certain date but anyways it's all these guys they always release the same shit they do a tabletop they do an unboxing and if they do show shooting it's always like a couple of days of shooting and then they return the gun back maybe a hundred or so rounds you know so so it, I, I don't get anything from that and I don't see how any other reviewers do as well if you've seen one of those type videos you've seen them all so I have actually stopped watching a lot of these like new video reviews if I've seen you know I watch one and then I'm, I'm assuming that well this guy just did one and this guy just did one and it's the same gun and I've watched their videos before and it's always the same shit so you know if, if it's all the same I'm just gonna watch one from now on and that's what I've been doing you know reading uh, stats from the the, the, the gun makers web page on how long it is how long the barrel is how wide it is and taking calipers and stuff and you know and, and measuring the width and you know doing it in comparison to a Glock and a and a Smith and Wesson you know that's all old shit to me yeah I, I don't get anything out of that if I I could do the same thing instead of you reading the stats to me I could actually go to that website and actually find it myself so it's just it's redundant information so I prefer to review a gun after more four or five hundred rounds of shooting and over time you know of carrying and uh, and, and, and and shooting different types of ammo um, you know over a six month time period that's valuable and in case in point I have problems with my Grand Power P11 which is a subcompact gun that was my carry gun for a while and Every time I took it to the range, it was it was fine for a while, and then after maybe the 500 round mark, I started noticing issues where it it would fail to go back in the battery, and I would always have to tap the back of the slide, get it to go forward, and it's usually when it was when it was dirty, but sometimes you know that gun it would do that after 100 200 rounds of ammo. In my opinion, that's not really considered. Well, why would a gun start acting like that after only 200 rounds of a range session? That, if you open up the gun, it's dirty, but technically, I mean, with all of my other polymer guns, I, I didn't have that issue. Um, so the dirtiness of the, the, you know, the carbon and things inside the, the internals of the gun, uh, they still shot. The grand power, it would balk, it would it would complain. 
and uh, I did probably six videos on it kind of documenting each time I went to the range and I had issues and I was trying to figure out what was going on I was trying all these remedies I was, instead of using oil I was using grease then I started stopped using grease and I started using a, a, a heavier oil um, and then I actually started making sure that the gum was clean before I went to the range and then trying all out you know these different ammo types and stuff and you know I had this documented process and see that's valuable you don't see other other gun makers or, or gun reviewers doing that on YouTube uh, the first well there's one now because I that's what I wanted to compare myself with uh, Tim at uh, military arms channel he got the big brother to my p11 i think it was either the p1 or the k100 and he was reviewing that and he shot like 500 rounds out of that gun and uh he had he had the exact same issues and then when you when you're watching this video and you're looking at the comments on the bottom everyone's kind of you know he he generated a lot of attention but it was only because he was the first big gun reviewer to actually speak about that particular issue with that, you know, that style of gun. It's got a rotating barrel and that 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 spot where the barrel rotates on uh, on the frame, it gets dirty easily. And I believe that's what's hampering a lot of the failure to, to, to return the batteries. Um, well, that's what's hindering the fit, the, 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 you know, the process of it returning the battery. So, um, the only reason that, I mean, again, it, he's got a big viewership and it became apparent then, but then I'm like, what the fuck, man? You know, I ran into this issue a year and a half ago and, it, and, you know, I didn't get any traction and, you know, I didn't get any, you know, my, my videos didn't get the amount of attention his did. It got a bit of attention, but not on the same level of, you know, him kind of posting it and saying he was having issues. So it's kind of weird and it kind of ticked me off. I'm like, dude, you know, the whole reason I, I, I posted all what I did was because no one else was, and I was kind of getting fed up with the big, uh, the YouTube channels where they were kind of just just treating it as like a, an assembly line you know their, their whole process of getting a review out it's like they're in such a rush to get it out that they don't really care about anything else you know they don't care about spending time with the gun to actually see if it has issues or see if there's a commonality like it doesn't like getting dirty you know, or, you know, the failure returns the battery, that type of thing, you know, and I've yeah. shot 14, 1500 rounds out of the grand power so far. I don't carry it anymore. So it, you know, the round count isn't really going up. Um, I don't carry it. I don't shoot it because it's a turnoff for it, you know, for me to have to stop and, and hit the slide to, to go forward or have to stop and clean it during a range session. So, you know, I stopped shooting it. But the whole, re again, the whole reason I did that was, you know, I documented all of that was because no one else was covering it. And it's, it's, it's kind of cool to see Tim spend extra time and, and money on ammo to shoot that gun to get the same effect you know to get the same things I did out of it but it's not really cool for a lowly gun owner like me to kind of highlight a potential problem and and no one no one even sees it because I'm not I'm not big like those other channels are you know so um, but though I mean that wouldn't have happened if I would have said well we're gonna stick to a 10 minute 15 minute video you know um, I, I'm, I'm happy with what I do, um, you know, and half the time, the, 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 the bigger gun channels, when you leave comments kind of asking them to do things, they don't do it. It's like they get so much that they don't care. They're just going to stick to what works for them um, because they're making money. You know, they're not getting uh, ad re revenue anymore, but they, they still have Patreon uh, viewers, right? So, uh, 
so it's still a money thing you know so uh, if it takes 40 minutes for me to do this video and we're already at 15 and I'm only on bullet 2 that's what it takes don't care uh, you know you could easily just skip them and move along uh, so bullet number three the gun media I mean the gun community and social media so there's been a, a few incidents of kids and guns either shooting an adult or shooting kids in the last 30 days so th today it happened so th that makes the third incident in less than 30 days of a kid getting hold of an unattended firearm uh, and and someone dying because of it so the first one we're only going to talk about the first one because it has a lot of points that I want to point out the other two issues we can talk at a later time uh, but I wanted to highlight that there were three of them happening in short in a short time span because it seems to be an uptick in this happening it may it might be you know someone might blame it on the fact that there are new gun owners but so this this lady here she had a late she uh she had five kids and she died a few weeks ago when her youngest got a hold of her handgun that was in her purse so this the second issue the the second shooting was a kid so so a mom she has some kids and she has a boyfriend the boyfriend is an ex uh ex-con um he brought gun a gun into the house and apparently she wasn't aware uh the kid found it and shot himself and killed and he died um the third one was so a kid two kids playing with a gun and the gun must have went off didn't kill the, sh the the one that was holding the gun but he killed his apparent friend or accomplice um, they're saying so far that the gun might have been stolen and that they found it like in the bushes or something so I'm mentioning all three of those because uh, I gave a summary because that doesn't fit the argument that there are a lot of new gun owners out there and maybe they're not spending time with their kids teaching them about gun safety. So only one of these ladies. So one gun was stolen. One was owned by a boyfriend of a a mom whose kid got killed and apparently he snuck the gun into the house without telling her and then there's only one where the, the apparently the lady actually bought the gun and is a concealed carrier and she had it in her purse and this is the moment that we're going to talk about so she uh she was 22 years old she had five kids and I think this happened in North Carolina in the sub suburbs of uh, Charlotte and this happened maybe three weeks maybe close to a month ago um, the article didn't elaborate on the ages of the children but it did say that the oldest was in another room at the time and that it was the youngest that was that shot and killed her it was the youngest that got a hold of the gun that was in her purse so if she's only 22 years old that doesn't leave really that doesn't re leave a lot of time she's not going to be having no teenager kid right so that means all of her kids were very young and the oldest was very young so even though the article didn't elaborate on the ages it did mention her name her full name and I took her full name and I did a Facebook search. I found her her uh, her Facebook page and I perused her pictures. I saw pictures of her and uh, I skipped a, a bullet. Uh, so we'll, we'll keep talking about it here. So uh, she had, they had pictures of her and her kids and I was actually able to locate 
a picture of her youngest baby. The picture was taken when the baby was maybe eight months old, per the picture's comments. Uh, that was in March or April of 2018. So, you know, it's now 2021, March 2021. That baby is uh, is under three years old. Um, so the question is, can you teach three-year-olds certain things? Yeah, yeah, you can. You can teach them what no means, and they'll understand that they're not supposed to have it or do it, right? Whatever it is that you're telling them, no. But still, you should never leave your kids alone with handguns, even if you've taught them. Because kids, sometimes they test boundaries. Um, the, the kids' mental faculties, their, their, uh, their mental capabilities aren't fully developed. Their decision-making uh, uh, capabilities aren't fully developed. They, they develop over time. Um, this is one of the reasons why you don't see uh, kids or even teens um, able to drink or drive, you know, that, that sort of thing, right? So um, it's because even even at a even at an older age, even at 16 or 17, um, it, you'll find that you know their insurance rates for kids that uh, uh, teens that age. Uh, are high it's because their deceit that their decision making process is still developing even at 16 and 17 even 18 years old i've actually heard that from cops as well you know if you go to some of these uh uh like i had to go my you know my, my two oldest kids um when they were interested in driving i had to go to the drivers uh uh they require the parents to come to the driver's orientation training or the driver's ed you know training it was an orientation for parents so that they can understand what they were in for and that you know parents played a big part in getting the license so and it was you know it was kind of relayed to me you know, each time that I went to those classes that, hey, um, you need to constantly be hounding your kids and telling them to do this or that or not allowing them to take the car unless, you know, you think that they're ready because uh, kids still don't, you know, kids that age still don't quite think like adults, you know. So, um, um so this baby was three under three years old when this happened. Um, I'm saying all this because a lot of blind, a lot of gun owners blindly react to 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 the, these topics here, and they, they 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 lash out and they say, "Teach your kids, um, you know, gun safety." Uh, that that's the mantra and it's like it's said without even thinking about each you know each time this happens with a kid and they die they, they don't even think about the facts they don't even look and read the first thing is, is like teach your kids gun safety uh, first off you don't know if she did we don't know if she did or didn't um, you can teach your kid certain things but you'd better not be leaving them to their own devices. Uh, a lot of times, you know, growing up, my parents told me not to do stuff, and sometimes I do what I wanted. Um, and and you know, that's that's me. You know, the response that that you usually see in Facebook when talking about stuff like this is, "Well, my parents did it, and I'm still here." Now, the world isn't you. There are eight billion other folks in the world, and there's a lot of kids. You know, they have a, you know those folks that that's kids included there's going to be children that that didn't do as you did when you were their age um you know i, I used to be a home father i raised both of my daughters from the womb up until my youngest was three and my oldest was five um i was straight up a home father that's all i did that was my job 
Um, so, so my wife was always deployed. And so I was always alone with the kids and I, I, you know, taught them, you know, their, their, you know, pre preschool things, um, you know, teaching them colors and, and numbers and stuff. Um, and you can tell some kids things and they know, but they don't know the consequences. So sometimes they test for consequences, you know, um, I caught my sister playing with matches once and we were never told to play with with matches and fire. She was three years old. So uh, someone come, you know, if someone comes up and says, well, you should teach your kids how to play, you know, to not play with matches like fool. We did. You know, just because a kid does something that they're not supposed to do doesn't mean that they weren't taught to not do that. You know, my cousin, he once put he once put uh, tweezers in a power outlet. He was maybe five years old, very much old enough to know better. And for a fact, he was taught never to play with the outlet. I don't know how he did not die, because when I I looked at the tweezers, the the tips were melted, and they were on the ground. You know that that you know we were in a different part of the house. It was me and my grandmother. He was in the back room, uh, in one of the children's room, and uh, the lights blinked. And so I'm like, well, grandmother asked me to go and check in, you know, parts of the house to see if there's anything wrong. Uh, I walked into the bedroom. He was on the bed. Didn't say anything. Didn't look like he was hurting or nothing. Um, and I was getting ready to walk out, and I looked, and I saw tweezers next to a socket. Socket looked okay. There was no burn marks, but the tweezers, yeah, the the, the tips were melted. Um, so again, that's a second example of a child doing something that they're not supposed to. Um, so uh, we talked about a child's mental reasoning being, you know, taking years to develop. Um, but one of the ways that that people and you know kids and people learn, you know, they learn by consequence consequence is a good teacher um uh not even consequence if you do something that you've never done before you learn by trial and error and that's basically what kids are doing when they don't listen they're learning by trial and error they might know that they might know that it's, that you said no but they don't know anything else you know so um um if a if a child says uh if a mom says no, you know, when teaching the kids how to, you know, uh, to not play with fire, you know, and the mom says no, and the kid does it anyways, they get burned. And then they associate that fire with pain and the word no, and they learn that consequence. So it's different with guns, though. Uh, a child pulls a trigger, and that's it. It's either a few seconds or instantly someone is dead or dying on the floor. Uh, uh, you know, there's no real equation to it. You can't equate it to like a fire extinguisher, fire extinguisher like someone did in Facebook, uh, you know, in the comments of that, that article. You know, someone said, well, you leave your fire extinguisher out in the open. Well, one, a fire extinguisher is not a, is not a gun. And two, I don't leave it out in the open. It's under the sink with all the chem chemicals and things that you don't want kids messing with anyways. And on that door, at least when, when I don't have to worry about that now. All my kids are grown. Um, when when I had my, my two girls when they were young, the fire extinguisher was under the sink with the chemicals and all other things that are under a kitchen sink. And the door had was child-proofed. But I still never let my kids kind of just nilly willy, you know, they were never under unattended. They weren't. Um, and, and plus, a fire extinguisher does not have the power to instantly kill or kill someone you love. Basically, leaving a two year old alone with a gun uh, because you taught them the word no and you trust them. That's that's playing roulette. You know, we're whether you're one year old or whether you're 60 years old, we only have one life to live, and 
it's very unresponsible to kind of just, you know, let your kids do as they will or trust that, you know, you saying no and maybe you tapping their hand is, is going to do something. You know, yeah, you can spank older kids to kind of let that sink home. But m remember here, we're talking in this particular case, we're talking about someone that was under three years old. You're not going to spank a two-year-old. You better not. Because you're definitely going to jail if you're caught. That, that's definitely child abuse. You know, like I, I, like I just said, the decision-making process and mental reasoning uh, of, of two-year-olds are not developed at all. So you shouldn't be beating and hitting on them because you're trying to get them to understand and, and they don't have the capability the capability to. So, you know, this lady had five kids. She didn't just have the two like I had. You know, I have, a, I have an older son too, but there's an eight month difference between him and the middle child. So, you know, I relied on them to, to help me with him. But, but this lady had five kids and all of her kids were probably close together. She probably had all those kid was, kids within six years. Um, you know, some of the folks thought that, you know, uh, Concealed Nation, the Firearms Blog, and all these other places shouldn't be posting things that make gun owners look bad. If that's all you got out of the story, there's something wrong with you. Of course, this is going to make us look bad. This is a good reason to kind of learn from someone else's mistake. We should always be able to discuss discuss gun things to understand how it happened and to make sure that it doesn't happen within the areas that we can control. So um, we're at the 32 minute mark. We can circle back and hit that last bullet or that third bullet that we skipped. Um, so we this that that particular bullet was actually talking about also talking about this lady and her five kids so when that was first posted the first thing that was said was the first thing that i saw that was said was was the gun legally owned and and note that the post that that concealed nation posted on facebook had a picture of this lady and she was black and uh, and my take from it was that someone saw the black the picture of a black woman and her having five kids and thinking that they were all baby kids and you know uh, she was a she was baby mama and you know they're associating their feelings about Black Lives Matter with anything that's black and so they make these comments so. Why, why would she have her gun in her purse if it was if the gun was stolen and and why would the police not report that it was stolen if it was uh, I firmly believe that if the, if the police report didn't state that it was a stolen gun then it was hers and you know this lady if she was a concealed carrier and it, and it looks like she was she's a part of our group she's a part of our our gun community she's a black woman but she's part of the gun community it doesn't matter what you think about the left doesn't matter what you think about black lives matter doesn't care you shouldn't really care about skin color but for some reason that's what was pointed out and I saw that multiple times. That's horrible. You know, I I have close to thirty guns in this house. I am a concealed carrier, um, but if someone looked at me if I was open carrying down the street, would would they think that the gun was stolen because they saw that I had black skin? That's retarded. But that's that's what we see. That's what I see 
when I see these comments from people that are supposed to be gun owners like me, we're, we're all in the same group, right? Uh, we all are gun lovers and we fight to su support and defend the, you know, the, the Second Amendment. But because she was black, it was questioned whether or not the gun was legally owned. Come on now. It's horrible. But, but I, you know, and I don't understand why folks would think that. I mean, is it just the fact that people hate the left so much that they're just trying to find anything necessary to kind of make the left and BLM look bad, even if it means trying to fault someone that's a part of your community? It doesn't make any sense. Would this have been asked if she was white? Probably not. I've never seen something like this happen to a white person and, and it would be asked if, if they legally owned a gun. This is it's horrible. It just makes me not have faith in the folks that I uh, I see at my gun range and the folks that I see making comments in my favorite forum groups and blogs and you know and, and Facebook groups. You know, it makes you wonder. Okay, well, this guy seems okay, but that's what I always think about people that are not of color. I try and give folks the benefit of the doubt because I that's the way I was brought up. I don't look at skin and, and associate an action or or a bad thing with a particular race, you know, person's skin color. I don't but things like this kind of try that they 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 push me to want something else I don't want to be associated with a bunch of racists even if it means you know even if it means I have to hang out you know even if they if if they are fellow gun owners we have a commonality but someone making comments like that I don't want any type of commonality with them at all I don't you know some some folks and, you know that don't that aren't sensitive to that because maybe their skin is not brown uh they might say you know forgive and forget or or kind of just let it pass getting tired of seeing all these comments from people that that say that they support and defend the constitution of the united states and you know making these hateful comments on you know on race you know they it's like they want the race war. They're they're so ingrained in this that they're forgetting. Okay, well, a large percentage, probably a huge percentage of of gun owners are probably people of color, not just black, um, but not just that. I mean, there's a shitload of of gays and and transgender gender folks that have recently bought guns, and and you're bolstering saying, oh. We, we gained a couple more million, but it's the shit that you hate. So you, you're, you're saying that your your numbers are bolstered, but yet you're shitting on everyone. You, you're still shitting on those people. It doesn't make any sense at all. But then I expect to see some comment from some fool kind of trying to explain things trying to explain it off or trying to make small of 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 all of this there's going to be someone that makes some nasty ass comment it, it's almost a guarantee and so with that being said i think what i'm going to do is i'm going to post a video and yes it's 39 minutes 40 seconds long so far i'm going to post it and I'm gonna moderate the comments. I'm gonna allow posting, but they need to be approved by me first. Um, in fact, I might not even do that. I might just 
I just might outright uh, just not allow comments. I think that's what I'll do. If you send me a message or something, you know, send me a, a message if you want. If you think uh, I should uh, leave that open for for reply, go right ahead. You know, send it, and uh, I might unlock it. But for now, I think I'm just gonna lock it. I don't I don't have the patience to kind of argue with folks, and you know, this is just one of you know again, this is my corner of the internet, right? And uh, I, I'm telling you what I saw. Um, I can substantiate a lot of what I said by going back to the post and kind of copying and pasting them, or, or you know, allowing this uh, this video uh, editor to to browse, you know, show my browser. But I'm not going to do all that. Um, that that's overly complicated, and plus, that's my social, you know, Facebook. I'm not going to sit here and start showing you guys my Facebook uh, feed sorry um, but yeah um, we're, we're done and uh, hopefully what I'll do is I'll I'll keep a running tab of this list so we had four bullets this time we'll just keep adding to it and I'll post my listing up on uh, my blog so I can keep a track of it and then maybe by the end of the year, we'll circle back and see all the things that we added and and if there's a commonality between all of them. We'll try not to make any repeats, um, but uh, that'll be a good way to kind of keep track of everything that we discussed in a in a 12-month time period. All right, bye bye.